In this sixth video of the organic chemistry video series, we will be covering organic functional groups. We will learn to identify the various types of functional groups and then learn basic nomenclature associated with each of the functional groups. Now starting off, a functional group is a specific group of atoms within a molecule that is responsible for characteristic chemical reactions of that molecule. And so we will look at, towards the end of the video series, a few types of chemical reactions associated with the functional groups. But uh, right now we will be concentrating on identifying the various groups. And this will include alcohols, aldehydes, ethers, carboxylic acids, etc. Here we have a uh, chart of functional groups. Now this chart is going to be um, crucial for you to study because before one can begin naming functional groups, they must first be able to identify the functional groups. And so we have our class of the compound, the functional group that you're used to identify exactly what class it belongs to, the general formula, and an example. So like on our halides, our halogens. Now a halo carbon is going to be any of the ones that has a halogen attached to it. The fluorine, the chlorine, the bromine, the iodine. In this reaction, um, we will be using R as our unknown. Just like in algebra, we use X as an unknown. Here we use R as our unknown. And R represents our unknown carbon chain length. So we have this carbon chain. We don't know how long it is, one carbon or a hundred carbons. But attached to it, we would have a halogen, a fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. For example, here we have a 2-chloropropane, and we've already covered how to name these in our previous videos. Now, an alcohol is identified by having an OH group or a hydroxyl group. So we have this carbon chain, and then we have this um, hydroxyl or, or OH attached to it. And so we look at this chemical and we can go, oh, that's an alcohol because of this OH. An ether is represented by this line O line, and what that means is we have this chain of carbons on this side and a chain of carbons on this side, and they're separated by an oxygen. And so here we can see our small carbon chain, our oxygen, and our other carbon chain. Our aldehydes, an aldehyde will always be at the terminal end of our carbon chain at the very end and our carbon will be attached to some length of other carbons and it will be double bonded to an oxygen it, it will be attached to an H and so here we can see it written at the very end and this is an aldehyde. Our ketones we're going to have this huge chain of carbons and we don't even know how long it is we have this chain of carbons and one of the carbons is double bonded to the oxygen. And so we can see that right here. And so it's very, very important that you spend time going over these functional groups and the names of the classes and that you're able to use this to identify the OH represents an alcohol. The C double bond OH represents an aldehyde because until you can do this, it will be impossible to move forward in our video series and to begin naming these functional groups. Now this is the continuation of that same chart. Uh, we have the organic acids, the esters, the amines, and the amides that we still need to cover. And so we recognize an organic acid because it's carbon, and again this is at the end of the, carb of the long carbon chain, but our carbon is double bonded to an oxygen and it's attached to an OH. And we can see that right here, and we'll notice that that's the end of the chain. Now our ester, we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then attached to another oxygen. Right here and right here we have chains of carbons. So here we have our chain of carbons, we have our carbon double bonded to an oxygen, carbon single bonded to an oxygen, and then attached to another chain of carbons. Our amines, we will have a nitrogen that's going to be bonded in three places, and here we have it, a propylamine, 
but it's attached to either um, three other carbons or carbons and hydrogens, but it will be attached in three areas. Our amide, we're going to have our carbon uh, double bonded to an oxygen. It's going to be attached to a nitrogen. Uh, that nitrogen is attached to a hydrogen. It can be attached to another hydrogen or another carbon chain. Here we see it right here. Our car carbon double bonded to an oxygen attached to a nitrogen that's bonded in two additional places. So again, you must study this slide and the previous slide, be able to recognize each of these functional groups and why they are the functional group they are in order to move on with the nomenclature. So as we uh, begin looking at naming functional groups and ide identifying the functional groups, we will be using the IUPAC substitutive nomenclature. And with the IUPAC substituted nomenclature, we may have up to four features. And I want to point out what these features are. The first thing that we can have is the locant. And with the locant, we're going to have that number, and it's going to be the location of some chain uh, that's coming off of the main chain. We can have the prefix, and that prefix is going to be um, telling us how many carbons are coming off of, of that little chain. You know, how big was that little chain? We're going to have the parent chain. That parent chain is going to tell us how long is that main chain. And then we will have the suffix. And it's with the suffix that we're going to determine what type of um, organic compound we're dealing with. For example, having an OL will indicate that we have an alcohol. So as we go through this, remember that the numbering will generally start from the, the end of the chain, which is closest to the group named in the suffix. So in this case right here, we would want this to be carbon 1 because it's closest to the OH.